Hi guys, I'm back! I've been on the road for about a month and a half, excited to get back into making these videos. Today's video is going to be extra special. I found, oh my goodness, there's another channel on YouTube, a very Girl Defined esque. I almost made the title saying worse than Girl Defined, but it is similar and I don't think she's worse, but still super cringeworthy and deserving of a response video. The channel I'm speaking of is called Mrs. Midwest. She's got around 85,000 subscribers and as of today, I don't know if anybody's made a reaction video to her because it seems that her like to dislike ratio is very positive in her favor. There aren't a lot of comments disagreeing with her. So I could potentially be the first. Let me know if I'm not in the comments. I'd love to see more people talking about this and normally that's what happens. I find a channel, I post about it and then it appears everywhere. It happened with Girl Defined, it happened with Paul and Morgan, Mrs. Midwest, I'm sorry, you next girl. But before I get into it, I do wanna remind my friends abroad that I am going on tour. So make sure you click the link in the description imperfectlyhumantour.com if you are abroad and would like to hang out with me and hear me sing some songs in person. It's been a wild ride getting to meet so many amazing people and I'm so thankful and if you would like to follow me on Instagram at Jacqueline Glenn, that is where I post a lot of my shenanigans on stories and things like that and I'm working hard on my Instagram so if you could give me a follow over there it would be much appreciated and without further ado Mrs. Midwest. The video I really want to talk about is called 10 Lies Society Tells Young Women. It is full of terrible advice, but I feel like since this is a new person, I want to give you a proper introduction to her on my channel. I want to go back and give you a full picture of who she really is and what kind of information she propagates. A lot of it centers around being a mother, which she is not yet, being married, being a homemaker, and being religious. And while I truly don't have a problem with any of those things that a person might be, the way that she explains it is in a way that is encouraging to other people. So I do want to go through and make sure that that message is a little bit counteracted. How can you become a homemaker too? So my first tip is of course you need a husband. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with being a homemaker, nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home mom, but to tell women, which you'll see later that she does, that in order to fully embrace their femininity, they have to do those things is sending the wrong message. So ladies, you know, if you if you want to do that, first step is just like get a man and like he'll pay for your stuff. Moving on to my second tip for becoming a homemaker is to prepare financially. Uh, you would think that in giving advice to people about how to be financially responsible, part of that might include having income. Nah, we'll have none of that. Actually, what we're gonna say instead is don't go to school. College is expensive, so you just shouldn't go. Don't go to college and take on six figures worth of debt. Now listen, I understand that college can rack up a lot of debt, but there are so many people out there, not just her, that promote this idea that going to college is a waste if you don't know exactly what you wanna do when you go in. A lot of people, whenever you're 18 years old and you're starting college, they don't know what they wanna do with the rest of their life, but they can figure that out in college by experiencing different subjects. But aside from that, it really does make you grow as a person. I learned a lot about how hard I needed to work to achieve the goals. I learned a lot of self-discipline and work ethic that I don't think I would have gotten had I just not gone to college. Express gratitude. When you are living off of someone else's income, it is essential to express gratitude to them and to show your gratitude every day, especially to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Your husband's making all the money and, you know, you are at home contributing, I'm sure, in your own way. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but I would hope that the first person you expressed gratitude to would be your husband and not the Lord. A lot of people have sh expressed fear at becoming a homemaker in the event that your husband would either pass away or leave you cheat on you, divorce you, etc. You would still be given half the income according to the courts. <laughs> Have no fear, ladies. If you haven't set anything in motion to protect yourself in the event of the guy that you're relying on leaving you, you know, there's always the courts. Just legal battles are great. It's, it's a good backup plan and half of his shit's your shit now. Good job. Finally, my last piece of advice for becoming a homemaker is to prepare mentally. You must prepare yourself mentally for living in alternative lifestyles. I just never would have thought that staying at home like I want to say stay at home mom all the time with this but first of all that is a lot more work than what this girl's doing because she doesn't have any kids yet she's literally just at home all day I don't know 
what you do with yourself, but that is apparently alternative. Is it edgy? Surprise, surprise, my lifestyle as a traditional homemaker is much more alternative and punk rock than any other lifestyle in 2019. <sighs> okay, please uh, leave a comment and let me know on a scale from one to 10, one being not at all, 10 being the most you could be, how punk rock is this girl? Just. It, it's gotta be an 11. These go to 11. Learn new skills and acquire things that you can take with you into your new role as a homemaker. Learn how to bake bread. I do have a video about that too. Oh my God, I can't wait to watch your video on how to make bread. Not dough though, she's not making any dough. Just bread, I'm sorry, it was a terrible joke, I tried. So let's get into this next video. 10 lies society tells young women. I'm going to skip through this, it's a rather long video, almost 20 minutes long, so I don't wanna spend all fucking day doing that or I will lose my mind. And actually to help myself, I'm going to enjoy this label-less, potentially adult beverage. You know, no free sponsorships. All right, everybody, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and I run the blog called Mrs. Midwest. Mm. Sorry, sorry, continue. If this is your first time visiting, we are all giving you a very warm welcome. And of course, the we I'm referring to is the feminine family. The feminine family. God, I mean, a lot of people have names for their fan base, like Jake Paul it was super creative and has the Jake Paulers. Everybody seems to have their thing. I never did it. I thought it was weird. Whatever, moving on. But apparently this is the feminine family. Hmm. The first lie I want to debunk is the lie regarding our femininity. Society tries to shame young women for their femininity. Society tries to shame young women for their femininity. I don't, I'm really confused as to what the hell she's talking about. I would love to see how she even defines femininity because it seems like from, from what she's saying here, uh, just staying at home and cooking and cleaning and having babies is, is super feminine. And if you choose a career path, that's a masculine trait. Why is, is being ambitious and going after a career and working hard and waiting to just have kids and, and settle down until you've established something for yourself, why is that a masculine trait? And to be fair, if we're gonna talk about people being shamed for being feminine, I think that'd be more of a problem that men suffer from, from anything else, where they're told that if they show things like emotion or are effeminate in any way, that that is some kind of horrible thing and they're not manly enough. I really wonder if they could be part of the feminine family or if that's just, if that's just us girls over here. I don't know. Instead of elevating truly feminine women, society seeks out masculinity in women and then elevates those women. Citation needed. I need examples. One example. I, I would love for her to give me a few, actually, a few examples would be nice of women that have been elevated in society that are super masculine in some way and why you have to give those characteristics of these people a masculine label just because they have been applauded for some kind of success. I don't get it. Society has been pushing women to embrace masculinity. In what way? I really, really want this to be elaborated. So Mrs. Midwest, if you're watching this video, please do follow up and elaborate on examples of women that have been elevated because of their masculinity and what traits these women possess that particularly are masculine. The second lie that society tells young women has to do with their careers. Society paints this lie for young women like pursue a career, like break the boundaries, be unique. And the fact is, it's not unique. Ooh, did you guys get the sass there? It's not unique. And why the facial expressions when you say good, positive things like pursue a career? It's not, it's not pursue a career, it's like pursue a career. Like she is putting it down. She tries to say that she supports all women, but the way you are presenting this is not supporting women who actually are pursuing careers. You're putting them down and lifting up women who are stay at home, People. And on a side note, I personally never fully understood the, the beauty or excitement in being like super unique in certain areas of life. A lot of people have common threads and that's fine. You can be unique in other areas, be unique in your style, 
or what you enjoy in music, or the way that you want to spend your free time, I don't know. You don't need to be unique in the fact that you have a career, or whatever kind of career you have. Women who choose to go get careers and work should not constantly be shit on by YouTube channels like this one, and Girl Defined it are constantly saying that doing those things is somehow losing a part of your femininity. Like, girls, a lot of girls want to be feminine, but they also want a career, and I don't see why those two things need to clash at all. All right, the third lie that society tells young women is to not consider their fertility window. You know, the magazines, the online publications, I could pull up tons of headlines right now telling people to wait to have children. They don't like the science behind the fact that a woman is fertile between her first period. It starts to go down. No shit! I mean, the title of this video is about lies women are told by society. I don't think women are ever being lied to about the fact that the older you get, the less fertile you are. I don't I don't think that's like a, a surprise. I do think that there is value in telling people to wait until they are at that point in their life where they have a stable income and they have some sense of stability that they can afford to provide for a child. A lot of people in their early 20s simply just don't have that. So yeah, I do think you should wait to have kids until you are prepared. And that's not anybody saying to ignore when you're fertile and don't forget that when you're past like 45 you can't do it. If you're a young woman and you're planning on having babies after 35, after you've done your career, please reconsider that. God, there's just so many things that she does like that that are passive aggressive towards women that want careers. She goes like career, like it's some kind of nasty thing. Girl, if you wanna wait until you're 35 to start a family and you have a badass job and you've done well for yourself, congratulations. There's nothing wrong with you, I'm proud of you. By planning your life around family instead of family around your life. That's the worst piece of advice I've ever heard, plan your life around your family instead of your family around your life? She's talking to girls right now that don't have a family yet. So she's asking women out there that are very young to not pursue a career because of the hypothetical family they might have one day. Don't take this chance while you're young to pursue something that makes you happy that you could potentially be very successful in because what if one day you have babies? <laughs> All right, the fourth lie that society tells young women is that marriage is a disaster. <laughs> I mean, that's not like a lie that society tells. I mean, of course there are beautiful marriages everywhere, but it's not like we can't observe all the failed marriages around us. I mean, most people who get married, like a high percentage of them at least end up getting divorced. It's a terrible statistic, but it's reality. I got married in my early 20s. I know a lot of people that did, and there's a lot of happiness. You know, marriage is not this horrible disaster. Good for you, I'm happy for you. I hope it is long lasting and that you have everything in life that you want. But I will say at the same time, I do suggest people to not get married when they're young because a lot of the time it takes a while to develop who you are as a person and if you don't know who you are yet then you shouldn't commit that to somebody else. I'm not saying you can't fall in love and truly love somebody when you're young and I'm not saying that that person might not be your person and that you might not eventually end up together but I don't see a reason to rush into marriage when you're in your early 20s. Just date them. And if it so works out that you want to get married and have kids in your late 20s, that's fine. It's really fine. You don't need to rush through life. Psychologists have done studies on this, and the fact is that the divorce rate is the same if you marry before 20 or after 30. Citation needed. 48% of those who will marry before the age of 18 are likely to divorce within 10 years, compared to 25% of those who marry after the age of 25. 44.6% of couples married between the age of 20 and 25 will end in divorce. After 25, you have the highest chance of success. Before 25, it seems like everybody freaking fails. A little bit older. Just give it until then. 25. Please. I searched again what age group has the highest divorce rate. It says the age group with more divorces is the 20 to 24 years age group, both men and women. Girl, I know you said you got married in your early 20s, but you fall into this demographic. I hope that you are fine, but the uh, statistics from psychologists that you cited, I don't, I don't really see that anywhere. So the ideal time to get married is your 20s. No, it's not. I do think that the best marriages have an 
element of God in them through the Christian faith. Divorce rates for atheists are among the lowest in America. Divorce rates among conservative Christians were significantly higher than for other faith groups and much higher than atheists and agnostics experience. Divorce rates for conservative Christians are higher than for liberal Christians. Perhaps there are other more secular foundations for marriage that conservative Christians are missing. What might they be? Well, an obvious possibility is treating women like fully autonomous equals in the relationship, something which conservative Christianity frequently denies. Well, shit, that just goes along with the theme of this video perfectly, don't it? The sixth lie society has been telling young women is that being at home sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no one has said that. Staying at home is great. Why would anybody say, I want to get up and drive to work, unless they're just super passionate and good for those people, but most people want to stay home. Like, I, I don't think, like, this video is just full of shit nobody says. And I debunked this in my five myths about being a housewife homemaker, but being at home is amazing. It allows you to grow on an individual level because you can explore new hobbies. Not having a job is great. I just, I sit at home all day and I, I learn how to paint or maybe sew or I bake bread and make a pies. It's just, I don't know why so many people think that that life sucks, but like, it's actually great. Being at home has been the best blessing outside of salvation that I have ever received. The eighth lie that society tells young women is that faith has no place in 2019. Our world likes to pretend like we don't need God, as if we're already so smart, so developed, so progressed that, that we're beyond needing God. And the thing I think about that is that it is foolish. Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna follow that with saying, in 2019, we are so developed and progressed that we actually do not need religion anymore. It's, it's actually pretty antiquated. We are a religion that preaches that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has forgiven us from our sins I can't do it. I and has delivered us unto new life so that we can love It's another girl to find. She's another girl to find. Only like one of them. Only one. It's like, I can't. I just can't handle it. I can't handle it. The tenth lie that society tells young women is that it's not a big deal to go into debt. What? Are people in society just being like, you know what, kids, debt is great. Get as many credit cards as you can, max them all out, and never pay them. Debt is awesome! The thing about college is that a lot of people go just for the experience. They go to meet people, they go to experience the parties, they want to, they don't know what else to do during that time. Oh god, this is another anti-college piece. Wonderful, education bad, Jesus good. My god, I didn't go to college because I wanted to party. Actually, I rarely partied in college, which now looking back, I totally regret. I should have had more fun. Yes, it's expensive, but it's an investment. It's an investment into your future. And even if you don't know exactly what you want going in, a lot of people can figure that out. And if you want to take time off to figure yourself out more, that's fine, but I do think college is something that really shapes who you are as a person. It gives you a lot of character. It gives you a lot of work ethic and discipline and things that I honestly don't think I would have achieved what I have in my life if I didn't have those lessons that I got through college. So unless you are extremely certain about your path, about what you want to do, and about the job waiting for you. Oh man. All right, I'm putting it, I'm putting it away. I'm putting it away. I can't watch any more of this video. Uh, I already kind of gave my opinion on the college thing, so I don't want to repeat myself on that. But I do find it extremely hypocritical that she ends this by saying, if you're not certain about what you want to do and the job waiting for you, don't go to college. So that kind of begs the question, what if you're not certain about what it takes to be a mom? Is anyone really ready for that? Or do you just kind of go for it because you know you want it one day? I know I want it one day. But I know that whenever it happens, whenever I, you know, decide to take that step, I'm gonna feel unprepared no matter what I do. It's a scary thing. So most people going into the idea of even becoming a mother potentially one day are going into it without that certainty of the job waiting for them at the end. No one has certainty with anything that you do in life. All of it is just a learning experience. It's a learning curve and we're all on it. So to sit there and shit on going to college if you don't know exactly how you're gonna feel after, but then say go ahead and get pregnant and married in your early 20s just kinda blows my mind. Anyway, like I said, I had to put it down. 
was too much for me at this moment in time, but I do believe I stumbled upon another extremely cringeworthy channel that I will definitely delve into more in future videos. If you guys want, let me know in the comments. I will say, if I have to compare Mrs. Midwest to Girl Defined, I think she is more intelligent more well-spoken, and probably less crazy, definitely less bigoted than Girl Defined, although she hasn't given her opinions on like gay rights or trans rights or anything like that, so I might want to reserve a little bit of judgment, but that's just how I'm feeling based off of the two videos I played for you today. Let's be real, could anybody be worse than Girl Defined? Is that even friggin' possible? Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section below. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please click that subscribe button and click the bell to make sure that notifications are on. A lot of people leave comments on my videos saying that they don't get notifications and that breaks my tiny little black atheist heart. So click subscribe, click the bell notifications. If you liked this video, please share it on social media to help spread the good news. And again, if you are one of my friends abroad and you'd like to see me on tour, click the link in the description in perfectlyhumantour.com and come to one of my shows. And if you want to follow me in all of my shenanigans, follow my Instagram, Jacqueline Glenn. I post a lot of fun stuff there and actually also a lot of cool videos are going up on my vlog channel youtube.com slash Jacqueline vlogs. I'm posting all kinds of videos from my tour. We had some crazy experiences. We were driving an RV, had to dump the RV. Things happened. But anyway, please check out that channel. I'll leave all the relevant links in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye! Alternative and punk rock.